Hello and welcome to a very brief Spark AR tutorial video. This is a video that's going to continue on as part of our HDRI or working with HDRI series. So please make sure that you've watched the first part of that because that basically goes through how to create our environment map from scratch. Um, in my case, I was using a 360 camera, but as I explained in that video, the same process would be worked if you're using a standard DSLR. So once we have our environment map, what can we do with it in Spark? How does Spark deal with it? And what are the kind of advantages and workarounds we need to follow? So let us begin. So Spark AR can take advantage of environment maps. So as you can see in this very, very rough quick scene that we made here, we have this uh, sphere, which has an environment map texture applied to it. So this material or environment map we've got is actually the one we created um, in the previous video where we're looking at creating an environment map from scratch, making sure that's an environment texture. So you always, by default, when we work on environment textures, you have a default material. So what environment maps basically do is basically they are the reflection, they are the light data. It's the information that's been taken for the reflective properties of metal, plastic, or anything that kind of takes on a sheen essentially. So for example, you could use an environment map for having like a window or piece of metal then trying to emulate a space that that machine or piece of equipment would be spaced in. So Spark AR can handle this. However, there's certain processes we have to kind of follow and workarounds we have to abide to. So if we was in Spark AR um, and we just wanted to add an environment map, we can't, it's not easy to just add an environment map. You can't just drag a PNG in or a 360 panorama image in and tell it to this environment map. You have to go through the process of making sure it's the correct dimensions, the correct .hdr format. There's quite a few little steps we have to go through, which is what we did in the previous video. But if we was to go into Spark AR and just click on environment texture, all this will do is bring up a sort of library of HDRI environments that are already supplied by Spark AR. Now, in most cases, this will emulate most environments, sort of like offices, outdoors, cloudy days, etc. However, if you want something more bespoke, like I said, you would need to create your own or go to a website such as HDRI Haven and download one from there. So let me just start from scratch. I'm just going to click a new project and show you how this works. So let me just quickly whip up some scenes, add in sphere, like so. Da -da -da -da. Add a plane tracker, apply our sphere to the plane tracker, and just quickly scale this up and move this into scene. So when we're applying an environment map, we have to apply it to a material. So if we look at the default material here for the sphere, you'll notice that we have this environment already enabled and it always uses the default environment, which is what Spark does provide you. It's like a kind of clean-ish office area. Uh, if you look on the material, we need to make sure the shader type is set to be physically based in order for it to take advantage of the properties of the metal or plastic that we're trying to create. If we had it on standard, uh, you notice that we don't have the environment option. Likewise with basically all the others. So we need to make sure we're on physically based if we're working with environmental data. So turn environment on. And you'll notice that now it adjusts to the light level that is contained within that environment image. So I'm just gonna to go to add asset import from computer. And because we resized our HDR image correctly, and again, this image will be available to patrons um, and the actual one in this video will be available to everybody via the link in the description down below. We simply select the .hdr file, hit open. And if this has worked correctly, it should be imported as a texture that is an environment texture. We select our material, 
we'll go to environment and we should be able to select our environment texture like so. Now it will default reset our surface properties or parameters so we'll need to adjust those so for example if I wanted something that's metallic I just increase my metal value fully so this is something like a chrome ball for example. Uh, if I wanted something that's a bit more brushed or a bit more kind of got some dirt to it I'd add a bit of roughness to it. I could also still apply emissions um, or surface deformities to it so if I wanted to have like some rust or some like lumps or feel a bit degraded I could create a normal map sorry that does that. I could still also apply an, a, a ability of texture so see if I've got anything here I could use. Probably not going to have a huge amount on this machine. So I've just got a texture here. But you can still see that the light data and the reflection is still being handled by our environment map. So I can rotate my environment around. It's taking on the reflection of the light in our scene. So if my surface was less metallic and more rough, the light now wouldn't bounce off. So this is what a physically based shader type allows you to do. So where would you use this? Like I said, you use this on things where you've got any kind of shine. So plastic, uh, you could use something similar to this for water reflections. Uh, metal obviously is a quite obvious choice. Um, but HDI maps are used very commonly in the VFX industry. They've got a variety of uses. We'll look at using HDI maps in Blender and other programs in as part of this uh, short series. And like I said, I'll be supplying some HDI textures down to our patrons in the description down below. And that's basically it. There isn't a huge amount to this to kind of um, worry about. But it's something that, again, we don't see a lot of people using environment maps, but it kind of has a place within Spark AR. Um, again, though, it's just using it to limits of the program that you have available to you at that time. So again, I've been Stin Fisher. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.